No one thinks we're weak. No one wants to screw around with us. Nobody. That was President Biden in Thursday night's debate, where the candidates spent a lot of time talking about foreign policies, those threats, the border, and the intersection of the two. Also top priorities for our next guest. Congressman Michael McCall, Republican from Texas. He chairs the House Foreign Affairs Committee, sits on the Homeland Security Committee as well. Welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, let's start at the border because we had reporting from NBC News this week that Secretary Marcus is batting down at least in some, we need to know the specifics of what he has a problem with. But what they've said is 400 people have been smuggled into this country that we know of in connection with this ISIS-related group. We know that we've lost track of dozens of them. Um, and we also, this comes just a couple of weeks after we had the eight Tajikistan men mm -hmm. um, brought in on terror concerns. Uh, what can you tell us about their case, uh, about this ISIS smuggling network? What do we know? Uh, two very frightening cases, separate cases. Smuggling operations, the ISIS smuggling operation, uh, 400 that we know of were smuggled into the United States. I think that number's much higher, Shannon. The other case is the most disturbing to me. Uh, from the uh, what's called the Khorasan region. This is a region in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Tajikistan where they were able to <clears throat> get to the southwest border. Get this, they apply with a CB1 app for an interview. They are detained and released into our society. These are eight known ISIS affiliates. Into the United States, the FBI, thank God, catches this thing, uh, and now they have been detained, but they were in New York, Philadelphia, and L.A., when I cheered Homeland, this is my worst nightmare. My worst fear is to have the southern border exploited, terrorists getting into the country. Uh, we never saw that. We saw known and suspected terrorists detained but never get in. These individuals got in, and they were not here on a goodwill mission. They were here to do us harm. Okay, well, knowing that, knowing the danger, FBI Director Ray yeah. has talked about this, all the lights flashing, leading up to a 9-11 again, potentially. Um, the president said in the debate the other night he needs more money for border agents, for, you know, getting the, the enormous backlog at the immigration courts undone. Why not meet him some, somewhere, halfway on some kind of compromise, just to get that funding to where it needs to go when we have this level of threat? Because throwing money at this problem is not going to fix it. It's a policy change that needs to be effectuated. And that's the Remain in Mexico policy. I marked it up out of my committee. Uh, it worked very well in the, in the Trump administration. And on day one, he rescinded this policy. It means that your political asylum claims have to be adjudicated outside the United States. So when you're not released into the United States, that's culminated in about 10 million people, known rapists. You know, Mallorca said, hey, you don't have to detain aggravated felons, those are rapists, child predators, uh, you know, murderers. This is a reckless policy. So when <clears throat> you have a weak foreign policy after Afghanistan and you got a wide open back door into the United States and they know it, they're going to exploit it. And now we have evidence that they have. Let's talk about some other foreign policy hotspots. Um, Israel. Um, we talked with Senator Fetterman just back there from meeting with folks um, who are very worried. And, and I had I have a friend who's visiting in town from Israel this week. Had lunch with them. Very worried about the Hezbollah threat to the north. He says people in Israel know that that is substantially much worse for them than what's happening in Gaza now. Uh, I thought it interesting that the the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, General C. Q. Brown, said. Uh, according to the AP, that the U.S. won't likely be able to help Israel defend itself against a broader Hezbollah war as it was uh, able to help Israel fight off the Iranian barrage of missiles and drones in April. Are we able to assist Israel if that turns into a whole other front for them with Hezbollah, which is much better equipped and armed, and will we? Well, yes, we can. Uh, we have the capacity. We did so when Iran launched their rockets mm -hmm. into Israel. Remember that? 99 percent were uh, taken mm -hmm. out. They, they were not effective. But what about General uh, Brown, though, saying he doesn't think we can give that same level of help if Hezbollah starts? Well, what I, I respect him, uh, General Brown. I know him. But the fact is, we're not helping them. In fact, this is uh, what is uh, most disturbing to me, is that we're withholding weapon systems that I have signed off on and Congress has appropriated with the intent of sending those weapons to Israel. Remember the supplemental? Mm -hmm. They are effectively withholding seven weapon systems. I can't get into the details. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is not helping Israel. And by the way, same thing in Ukraine. You know, I wrote in must shall provide attack to Ukraine to use against the Russians. They said, OK, we'll change the policy. You can hit inside. 
Uh, but then they restrict them from using attack -ums. Well, and in fact, we've got a, a map from the Institute for Study of War that actually gives us a look at how far the weapons we've sent, where they're authorized to be used. You can see that. Um, as I understand it, it doesn't hit most, it wouldn't reach to most military outlets uh, for the Russians or hit any of their military air bases. So at one point, President Biden said he wasn't, he didn't think any of our weapons should be used into Russia. He worried about sparking World War III, but now there is some level of use in Russia. Well, they said they changed the policy, but they, they were limiting the weapons, restricting them from using the very weapons that could effectuate that policy. You saw that map, that whole blue area is sort of off limits. Russia knows it. The Congress passed the TACMs again and appropriated them to go into this region. I met with Zelensky after Normandy. Uh, they're very, very frustrated because, look, either give them everything they need to win or get out. Don't tie one hand behind their back. And they're doing it with Ukraine. It's hurting Ukraine. And they're also doing it uh, with Israel. I want to thank General Jack Keane for that map, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's been very helpful. Well, Institute of Study of War, General Keene, uh, they are very informative and in trying to keep us up to date on all the details of these, unfortunately, many foreign policy areas that we're drawn into right now. Chairman, good to see you. Thanks hey, for thanks for having in. me, always. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.